Hello, and welcome back to Chess Openings Explained. Uh, as always, I am your host, National Master Caleb Denby, uh, and today our big topic is going to be uh, about a certain chess player by the name of Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, and now Hikaru has been doing something really interesting lately in a series of online rapid and blitz tournaments that he's taken part in. Uh, and that thing is he's repeating the same opening line uh, against uh, 1d4, and specifically the Queen's Gambit. Uh, and he's playing this line over and over again with pretty mixed results. He's had uh, a couple unfortunate losses, uh, a couple really nice draws, and uh, I don't think he's won too many games with this opening, but it's less of a super combative try to win out uh, in the Queen's Gambit declined, and more of just a, a solid way to get to a equal position that he should be able to hold without too much difficulty. So today, the topic of the lecture is going to be this line of the Queen's Gambit declined, and uh, how people have been breaking through against Hikaru in the line, and how Hikaru has been holding in some cases. Now I did say he's just started repeating this over and over and over again, uh, pretty much in every game with black that he has uh, when white goes for it. But I did want to start with a slightly earlier game, uh, and that's because I wanted to see what this looks like in a classical version. Of course, all these latest tournaments have been mostly uh, rapid and online, and so it has a little bit of a different feel. But in this game, Vichy Anand had the white pieces against Hikaru. This is a while back, I believe, and this was, uh, in fact, a classical game. So let's see how it went. We have d4, d5, c4, e6, Knight c3, Bishop e7. This is a little bit of an interesting move order choice by Hikaru in this game. Uh, the point, I believe, is that if Vichy wanted to go for uh, an exchange QGD, all of a sudden this move Bishop g5 is not available to white. And this is generally the, the main main line. You can contrast this uh, if Hikaru had played Knight f6 instead. C takes d, e takes d. Now Bishop g5 is uh, potentially a good move. So against bishop e7, uh, Vichy chose not to go for this line instead, just playing knight f3, going for some standard stuff, knight f6, and now bishop f4. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, I believe it has a name like the Harwitz attack, but it, it's just known as basically the, the bishop f4 qgd. Uh, white decides to bring this bishop out to f4 voluntarily, rather than the main main line, which is, I, I suppose, bishop g5. It's a little bit more popular. So this line we're going to take a look at involves bishop f4 from white. Black goes ahead and castles. We have e3 now by white. And for a long time, uh, mostly people are playing the move c5 in this position. And the point is you just immediately contest the center. And you end up in a position that uh, is going to have an isolated queen's pawn for somebody. Uh, in this specific case, uh, with all of the tension, in these four pawns, this is the structure that usually ends up in that IQP with the Isolani. Uh, in this specific scenario, it is probably best for white to take on c5, take on c5, and eventually take on d5, and you can end up with an IQP, as stated, something like a3, and you have arrived at your IQP. Now, uh, for some reason, Hikaru has decided that rather than go for these c5 lines, he is now a main proponent of the move knight b to d7. And this is going to be our starting tabia for today's lecture. This is the position that people with the white pieces keep going for against Hikaru, keep getting against Hikaru, and this is the line that they are really, really testing him in. So uh, who here has been keeping up to date with these tournaments and can guess white's next move? Uh, of course, what have white players been playing in response to this knight b d7 move by Hikaru? So give me a moment to reopen the chat here. So I can actually see what you guys are saying. Uh, no answers yet, but I will just reveal the move to you guys. The main line here, uh, you can just play normal moves, develop the bishop, trade the pawn, develop the queen, play a3. All of these are potentially playable moves, but the most combative move, perhaps, is this move, uh, c5. And this is, in fact, the move that most people are trying here uh, against Takaru. It's the most popular response to this knight bd7. And perhaps this is why, rather than knight bd7, the move c5 is really gaining in popularity. 
Of course, if you don't uh, play c5 yourself, if you play something like a3, for example, uh, then you're going to get met with c5 anyways on the next turn. And all of a sudden, these lines are much less comfortable for you. It's sort of just a better version for black being able to recapture on c5 with the knight. So this is why c5 by white is generally the response to knight b, to knight b d7. Uh, so c5 on the board in this game as well. Now, there are a few different options here for black in these cases. Uh, Hikaru has really been sticking to the main two tries. There is this kind of tertiary move of knight e4, but this is not really something Hikaru has been going for. And it is a little bit funny to be moving this knight around in the center uh, after white has just sort of claimed all of this space on the queen side. Just to briefly go over it, the game might continue rook c1, take on c3, take on c3, and then you get uh, the pretty standard approach of going after this pawn. However, due to the time that black has wasted, white has gotten his rook to a nice square, and you might end up in some pretty complicated lines involving uh, c6 here if you play this with black pieces. So let's not focus too much on this sideline because we are looking at what Hikaru is doing in these positions, and Hikaru is either playing the move knight h5 or the move c6. And these are uh, moves with pretty much identical plans associated with them. The difference, of course, is that n with knight h5, uh, black is taking the time to first remove the f4 bishop before going for the main structure in this position. With c6 immediately, uh, Hikaru doesn't spend the time to get rid of the bishop, instead just going for the structure. Uh, in this game, we're going to start out with knight h5. Uh, this is what Hikaru played in the classical version, uh, in the classical game against Vichy, and this is how this game went. Uh, now, a uh, sensible move by white, just bishop d3, getting the bishop developed. We have knight takes f4, e takes f4. And now I would like you guys at home to try and find Hikaru's next two moves. This is by far the most standard way of playing against this structure that white has achieved here. When white goes for d4 and c5, this is really the major way to play against these pawns. Uh, it's sort of not really okay for black to just kind of sit tight, allow white to play b4, and just kind of uh, chill forever like this, because this is just far too much space to give your opponent. So you do have to challenge these pawns. Do have to challenge these pawns. Uh, yeah, and the chat room does have uh, most of the plan here, it's c6 and b6. Uh, in this game, Hikaru actually starts with b6, which is totally fine because c6 isn't a very good move here. Uh, when you play b6 before c6, this is really the only move you have to calculate uh, if you're concerned about it. Uh, and here, knight b8 is just a good move for black. And this pawn is actually quite difficult to maintain. If you go for something like bishop b5, you could just met, get met with a6 and b5 to follow. If you try to play knight e5, well, you're kind of asking for bishop d6, and this pawn on c6 is going to fall. So b6 first, and uh, white responds with b4, just defending this pawn. Uh, now, of course, the follow-up for black is to play the move a5, and this is pretty much a move black should always be including. You want to have the most tension on these queenside pawns as possible. Uh, the move a3 is, of course, the response. White needs to support his structure. Uh, now, c6 by black is pretty much the only move. White goes ahead and castles. And now, uh, black has a couple choices, but really it all ends up being the same. Uh, queen c7 now for black. And this is still well within uh, very much known opening territory. So I'd like to ask the chat room, what's your initial impression of this position? Uh, what do you think about uh, white's chances and white's advantages? Because at first glance, uh, to my eyes, and perhaps to most eyes, it does look as though white has a very pleasant position, I believe. So does anybody disagree with me there, that white looks to have a pleasant position? Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm going to shed my jacket. I've been told it is misbehaving. It's a little bit warm anyways. White has two knights in the closed position. That is. A uh, fair assessment, a true assessment. Stuff almost fell, my goodness. F5 looks strong, looks closed. Black's king side looks a bit weak. Okay, so these are all pretty interesting thoughts. 
by the chat room. And normally you would be correct here. So let me show you how things could just go horribly, horribly wrong for black. If black doesn't really know what he's doing, he plays a move, uh, well white plays a move like g3 to defend this, uh, this guy in f4. If black plays some really awful moves like b5 and a4. Now all of a sudden I think white is totally winning in this position. This is just a totally crushing advantage on the king's side now for white with these moves that you talked about like f5 coming, g4 coming, and some kind of a pawn storm while these pieces are stuck over here on the queen side. Uh, fortunately for black, he doesn't have to play like this. And so black is obviously not doing too bad here. It does look as though white has a nice advantage on the king's side, but you know, Hikaru wouldn't be playing this every game if it was so bad for black. I'm sure everybody kind of realizes. Uh, so why isn't it so bad for black? The, the question kind of arises. Well, there's a couple reasons here. Uh, number one, black is just in time to get rid of this awful, awful bishop on c8. This is why black's next move is kind of the only serious move that gets played in this position. You cannot leave this guy stuck behind these awful pawns on the light squares, so bishop a6 is going to get played. Uh, other than that, it does still look as though white has some very nice advantages on the king side. So what's the reason black still isn't worse, even after trading these bishops off? Well, it's because of this tension on the queen side. Due to this tension on the queen side, black is always going to be able to open one or two files, kind of at his discretion. And with those files, white isn't really going to be able to attack on the king side effectively. Uh, whenever you kind of start to launch the attack, you start diverting some pieces towards the king's side, that's when black can open the queen's side and sort of counterpunch on that side of the board. Uh, and due to that, white really only has one advantage remaining. However, he does still have a structural advantage. Uh, and this advantage, I believe, is why people keep repeating this line against Ikaru. Uh, and it's the reason why sometimes they do actually win some games. So that's this sort of king's side advantage dealt with. Black has all this counterplay on the queen's side that white does have to worry about. So white sort of has to meet black on the queen's side rather than go crazy on, on the king's side all the time. Uh, so with that in mind, what is white's one uh, structural advantage remaining? Well, it's the advantage he seized by putting this pawn on c5 in the first place. It's this slightly, slightly weak pawn on the c6 square. Uh, this pawn is sort of the reason why it can claim to have some kind of an edge here. It's just going to be a little bit of a weakness on c6. It's especially going to be a weakness because black really is going to be forced to at least open one file on the queen side. And with at least one file open, that means there's always a small danger of rooks and major pieces invading and getting at this guy from the side or behind. There's also, of course, a 95 move that is always going to have to be on black's mind. Specifically, in these cases where black went knight h5, followed by knight takes f4, this really increases white's control over this e5 square. And so 95 does become a pretty serious uh, idea for white that black does have to look out for. So with that in mind, let's just take a look at how this game progressed. Uh, how Vichy ended up in the advantage and, and what happened here. So, Rook E1 was played in the game. Uh, and this is not uh, the most popular move. The most popular move is actually to capture on A6, but Rook E1 is a perfectly fine move. Uh, Rook E1, believe it or not, is actually making a threat. That threat is that if you don't do anything, look out, I might actually save my bishop after having unpinned. And then with this bishop, white can start to have some ideas on the king's side once again. So rookie one kind of making a threat. Uh, after bishop f6 though, Vichy actually didn't opt for bishop c2 in this game. It's a playable move, but instead just the simpler king g2 just to solidify. And black did now cave and capture on, on d3. Bishop c2 isn't actually all that much of an edge for white. Because once again, the king's side attack is not going to be easy to manufacture with all this play on the queen side. Uh, now black just plays very, very sensibly, very simple chess. And I think that's a real advantage uh, to playing this opening with black is the ideas are, uh, I use the word simple, uh, I don't know if simple is the correct word, but they're pretty intuitive. Uh, with black, you know, you take a look at this half of the board and you say, okay, 
I can't touch anything over here, so I play on this half of the board. And so because of that, Hikaru picks the move Rick FB8. But honestly here, there are a variety of moves that are, in my opinion, more or less equivalent for black. They all have the same ideas. Uh, rook b8 is playable, rook a7 is definitely a playable move, trying to uh, double up. You can even play a move like g6 or h6 here, just sort of passing the turn back to white. Uh, creating left for your king, you just play simple improving moves, and that is how uh, black goes about playing this position. And the good news for black is that white cannot really generate too many very serious concrete threats here. There is one move that black definitely has to be on the lookout for, and we'll get to that in a later game, I believe, but not too many threats that black has to worry about immediately, which is why black is doing mostly okay in these positions. Uh, rook f to b8 was played in the game, and Vichy actually goes for this move, h4. And this is, uh, at first glance, a strong attacking move. You know, Vichy's going for the throat on the king side. Uh, after further review, though, that doesn't actually turn out to be the case, because I, I can't really stress enough, all of this king's side play is really going to be difficult to achieve for white uh, due to the threats of always opening these files on the queen's side. I, I've said it before, uh, I'm going to repeat it more often throughout this lecture, because that really, really is important. H4, on the other hand, is uh, simply a useful move. That's why it was played. It's a s useful, improving move. And the idea is, in any potential endgames, you're always going to have to worry about this pawn coming to h5, maybe trading itself on g6, maybe even going all the way up the board to h6. And so it's just putting the pawn here, reminding black, hey, I can make useful moves, uh, pay attention to my h4 pawn, uh, it might uh, come in handy later on. Uh, in the game, Hikaru actually doesn't react to this at all, simply playing the move queen a7. Uh, once again, just piling things up on these potentially open files. Uh, and now Vichy plays a pretty interesting move here. Uh, and at first glance, it's pretty difficult to understand this move. Uh, so uh, I'm interested to see if anybody in the chat can spot the idea behind it. So the move Vichy played was knight e2. And as a small hint to you guys, knight e2, I believe, is only being played because this queen moved from c7 over to a7. So try and find the reason this move knight e2 came on the board. What was Vichy thinking? In the meantime, there's a question from Muhammad. Uh, what's wrong with c takes b6 and knight a4 targeting the c6 pawn? Uh, and uh, I'll talk about that in, in just uh, a moment here. Uh, the short answer is you, by giving up your c5 pawn, uh, it's true that you do have access to the c6 pawn, but you're also giving this rook access to your b4 pawn. And so it's kind of trading one weakness for another. It's definitely an idea that black has to keep in mind, but it's really not a, a normal idea by, uh, by white. Okay, some answers in the chat now. Uh, some people are saying g4. Some people are saying the immediate f5. Uh, knight g1 to h3 has been suggested as well with a pretty direct idea. Protecting d4 because of the black bishop, otherwise you lose c5. Uh, so, yeah, these are all some pretty good ideas. I'm not so sure uh, about this line in particular. Um, I guess, here, let me try to pass. Yeah, so b takes c5, b takes c5, and then uh, knight takes c5. This is uh, a pretty direct threat that Hikaru is, is actually making here, uh, in some cases. But that was probably just because I put this king over here. Let me make a useful, not a useful move, but a better passing move. Um, I don't think that there's any direct threats on c5 that you need to protect uh, d4 for, d4, yeah, for immediately. But uh, the idea is, of course, yes, to one, protect d4, but more than protect d4, it's more eyeing the d4 square uh, at a later date. This pawn didn't need immediate protection, but once this pawn leaves the d4 square, then knight d4 is going to be a powerful move. So, of course, knight e2, the idea was that after uh, you know some pass move by black, uh, Vichy does actually want to play the move f5, I believe. 
And the point is now, after e5, which is the most natural response, d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes. Now this knight can come into the d4 square. And there's actually a ton of lines that look fairly similar to this that, that could arise uh, in the position. So knight e2, I think, was mainly eyeing this d4 square for lines with f5. Uh, and in fact, after knight e2, uh, black was so concerned with this that he did play the move g6, just uh, guarding this f5 square a little bit more. Uh, now, uh, I do also want to mention that this was potentially playable for black, with the idea of going for uh, two rooks for the queen. Uh, the problem here is that the two rooks can't coordinate very well compared to how well the queen can uh, coordinate with, with its own pieces. For example, the immediate b5 would have been a problem here for Karu. The reason being, there's no comfortable way, comfortable way to respond to this. Uh, white's getting this pawn on c6, d takes c5 now, and all of a sudden the knights are coming in, defending the c pawns very well, and these rooks are going to struggle actually to, uh, to stop these pawns. For example, if you play a move like rook a8, you're already in quite a bit of trouble. Knight e d4, c7 is coming, queen b5 is coming, difficult, difficult stuff. So no uh, imbalance there, instead just g6, and now rook b1 by white. And this is sort of what white uh, does a little bit. He just sort of pokes and prods at black, and eventually black caves under the pressure uh, and has to open up some, some files. Uh, and that is exactly what happens in this position. Uh, so note that black could have continued kind of passing with a move like h5, but then he's sort of asking for this knight e5 idea to come on the board. And once again, you see this point of the knight on e2, ready to come back in to the d4 square. Uh, rook b1 is also creating sort of another threat, uh, potentially playing this move b5. This is kind of the one big threat that uh, black really does have to look out for. If white ever plays b5 and it turns out to be a good move, then black is really going to be in uh, quite, quite a bit of trouble, uh, I should say. So rook b1 and Hikaru at this moment decided to take on b4. And after take on b4, take on b4, he invades with the queen to a2. And this is more or less the, uh, the right idea by black in general. You wait for the right moment to open up a file, and then you make sure that when you do open the file, it's going to be more useful to you than it is to, uh, to your opponent. Uh, unfortunately for Hikaru, I don't think he quite calculated this one uh, accurately. The reason being, uh, Vichy's next move is uh, quite good at stopping any of Hikaru's potential ideas. Uh, Vichy simply plays the move rook e to c1. Now, if you recall, uh, Muhammad in the chat said, why not b takes c6 and rook takes, uh, or, and targeting the c6 pawn. And these ideas are actually starting to become uh, a lot more real. For example, if h5 or some passing move, now all of a sudden, moves such as b5 do uh, become a very serious consideration with this rook here and preparing, potentially, to actually capture on, on b6. Also moves like knight e5 are still a problem. So after rook e to c1, uh, Hikaru actually chooses to open up a second file with the move b takes c5. And I think it's this move that really seals the deal for Hikaru here into having a significantly worse position. And this is how Hikaru has been dropping some games uh, in this opening. This is the trickiest part of the opening, determining when it is good to open up these files on the queen side. If you time this improperly with the black pieces, that's when you find yourself uh, suddenly and sort of mysteriously in a ton of trouble out of nowhere. And this is what happened to Karu in, in this even classical game, where you have plenty of time to you know, think these breaks over, and Karu still somehow seemingly mistimed these breaks. So just to continue the line, b takes c5 is the natural response by white. We have h5 now on the board, just sealing off the king side, getting space for the king as well. And now Vichy's next move is knight e5. And this is a move we've been talking about for quite a while now uh, that Vichy had, plan, uh, had planned for uh, quite some time. In this case, uh, Hikaru does have to capture this knight because once again, this pressure on c6 is too much. He chose to capture with the knight himself. 
Uh, either capture was potentially playable, but he played knight takes. Now after f takes, this bishop came back to g7. And now this knight on e2 has sort of served its purpose, so we'll see it rerouting actually back to c3. Not super interested actually in this f4 square. It's a little bit too late in the game to be going for these kinds of sacrifices. So first, rook b6 is an excellent move by white. And this is why I say that b takes c5 may have been mistimed by Hikaru. Because once again, you only want to open these files if it turns out to be advantageous for you that the file is open. And after the move rook b6, it's very, very clear that Vichy is the one benefiting from this b file, in fact, rather than Hikaru. And after rook b6, uh, I think that white may simply just be winning this game uh, strategically. I think this is almost hopeless now for Hikaru already. The best you can kind of hope for is at some point uh, losing the c6 pawn, uh, because that c6 pawn is going to die now that uh, white is really claiming this queenside space and somehow trying to hold this endgame a pawn down, which is really, really unlikely in, in my opinion. So after rook b6, I think this game is, is firmly in Vichy's hand. Uh, and we are 25 moves deep, which you could argue is well past the opening. But this early middle game stuff is very, very much part of the opening play, in my opinion. So let's back up just a little bit and examine what went wrong for a card. First of all, I did want to talk about this line that Muhammad said in a little bit more detail. And the issue is that uh, knight takes b6, I think, would be played. Knight a4 is difficult to play in response, and if you just sort of pass for a turn, uh, all of a sudden, this open space for your opponent has become quite useful for him now that your c5 pawn is gone. This is kind of the, the, the cruncher in your position is the pawn on c5. It really frees the black pieces once this pawn disappears, so that's why not c takes b6. In the meantime, though, knight e2, g6, rook a, b1, and... I think that a takes b4 was, was quite simply wrong. Uh, as I've said, uh, I believe the general rule of thumb here for the black player is you only really touch these pawns on the queen's side if you're gaining something very, very concrete for it. Uh, and in this case, Hikaru simply did not gain enough by the opening of these files, and then Vichy was able to make use of them, and by making use of them, ended up winning the game. So a takes b4 may actually be the first misstep here. I think, uh, quite honestly, the move queen back to c7 is, is quite good. And if this queen is coming back to c7, then probably the move queen a7 was a little bit misguided in, in the first place. Uh, so queen a7 perhaps the first inaccuracy by Hikaru. And I think a takes b4 is really where he started going down the trail of uh, having a quite bad position, in my opinion. Here, uh, play might have, might have just continued with something like rook to c1, with uh, white sort of biding his time. White could also go for things like knight e5, knight takes c5, f takes c5, bishop e7 or g7. Uh, we'll pick g7 uh, in this case. And you get sort of similar stuff, but notably, uh, Hikaru has not committed yet to opening up these queenside files. And as such, he's going to have a better chance, I believe, of uh, defending this position uh, for sure. Uh, so a takes b4 is perhaps already a little bit wrong. After queen a2, rook uh, e to c1. Uh, a huge problem for black is moves like rook to a3 simply don't work. Uh, this move is actually just a losing move. And perhaps this is sort of what Hikaru missed, is that moves like rook to a3 here are just not going to be playable. Now why is that? Well, there's actually a tactic here for white. A very, very, very unusual tactic. So white to move and win in this case. Uh, I say it's a tactic, but uh, it's less about immediate material gain and, and more about just highlighting the awkwardness of these black major pieces. So white to move and win. White queen c7? Well, because it defends, for one, the c6 pawn, uh, for two, the e5 square, and this queen on a7 was honestly... Uh, blocking out the rook on a8. Ex excellent question, though. Excellent question. Uh, knight c3 has been suggested twice. Wibster actually does have the correct move with queen d1. The problem with knight c3 is, I believe, actually the move b takes c5 is playable for, 
for black. And if you continue with b takes c5, uh, all of a sudden rook b to b3 is going to appear on the board. And this is just some, some craziness, but not winning for white. The move is, in fact, queen to d1. And this uh, is just entirely unfortunate for uh, Hikaru here, if this were to appear on the board. Uh, for example, the threat is, of course, to play rook to c2, trapping the queen. And the other threat is stuff like knight c3 coming in. You have to play something like rook a to a8. And now, unfortunately, uh, once again, the move b5 is the threat that wins the game tactically. Uh, can't really force uh, the win of the queen in this case, but b5 is just going to be absolutely crushing. Just as an example line, uh, b takes c5. Rook a1, queen b2, uh, b takes c6, and this knight has nowhere to go, really. Knight b6, for example, back over here, c7, and already things are starting to, uh, to drop for black. So I think in general this idea of queen a7 was where Hikaru started kind of down the rabbit hole of, of a misguided plan. So in general, you don't really want the queen in front of the rooks like this, uh, just in chess, and specifically in this case, it turned out not to be such a great idea as well. And so this is where it all really went wrong for Akaru, in my opinion. And then especially after rook c1, the move b takes c5 is just being a little bit too friendly. I think even a move like b5 might have been a slightly better try. The point being, now this b file stays closed. For the moment, black does still have control over the a file, and maybe Akaru can actually seriously consider uh, trying to hold this, this position, although it doesn't appear to be the most pleasant thing of all time, in my opinion. Uh, okay, but let's see how the game finished for you guys. I'm kind of robbing you of the finish. Rook b6 came on the board. Rook over to c8, knight c3, queen back to a7. Now uh, Vichy just totally dominates the b file, and with rook coming up to b4 now, the knight does come into a4, and the b6 square is just dropping. Queen d8, and now rook a6 is a fantastic Winning move by the former world champion. Uh, if you capture this, just the queen comes in. Rook a8 doesn't do anything because the c6 pawn drops. So king g7 instead, and now rook b7. And this is just deadly. Uh, queen e2 was a little bit of a funny move maybe by uh, Vichy. Stuff like knight b6 is already crushing, but I mean queen e2 is a fine move. So queen e2, g4, queen back to a6, now that's this has sort of been rectified on the king side. Uh, queen g8, knight b6, and we see now Vichy taking the exchange and expertly navigating uh, any complications Akara could have had on the king side by checkmating his opponent first. So, what's the moral of this game? The moral of this game is that uh, while white doesn't have too many immediate like crushing attacks or, or threats on uh, anywhere on the board. White's role in this opening isn't really to, to go for those because those don't simply exist as I as I just said. White's role in this type of opening is to sort of poke and make little threats in, in the black position, like, oh, kind of hinting maybe I'm going to play f5, maybe I'm going to play knight e5, maybe I'm going to play b5. And at some point, uh, black is going to try and counterpunch and say, hey, you have gone too far making these threats. Now's my chance to open the A file, open the B file, and get at you on, on the queen's side. And it makes for a really interesting game, uh, which is why I'm not super unhappy that these that Hikaru keeps repeating it and people with the white pieces keep uh, repeating it against him as, as well. Uh, in this case, queen A7 was a little bit of a misguided idea. Hikaru opened up the files at the wrong moment, ended up getting crushed. Uh, now I actually want to jump to a game of Levon Aronians. Uh, skipping a little bit ahead here, as we spent a lot of time on that first game. Uh, Levon, uh, of course, uh, played against Hikaru a number of times in the Lindoris, Ra uh, L the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge that uh, concluded a couple weeks ago on Chess 24. And Hikaru faced uh, Levon in the quarterfinals, I believe, uh, where he did end up defeating Levon and moving on to the semifinals, but not without uh, facing Levon in this exact variation uh, a number of times, actually. So why don't we jump in, take a look at how Levon decided to handle it.
we have d4 to start, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop f4, castles, and e3. Uh, so once again, we get to our starting tabia after the move knight b to d7. This is just what Ikara has been playing recently. We have the move c5, and now rather than go for this knight h5 and knight takes f4 line, in this game, Hikaru actually does play the move c6. He's been playing both of these moves kind of interchangeably. Uh, the move h3 came on the board for Levan, highlighting that, you know, you're not going to get a second chance at my bishop, giving it a flight square. And now b6 does come on the board, b4, a5, a3. This is really just the main way of playing for black in this position. Uh, h6 was a very interesting choice by Hikaru here. The point being, if you play bishop a6 immediately, uh, white is going to capture this bishop. Uh, and after rook takes, just simply castle uh, is one of the main variations. And so with h6, black is claiming he makes a useful waiting move. Uh, and now, after the move bishop d3, black has the go-ahead to play bishop a6, claiming that white has lost a tempo if he's going to capture this bishop. Uh, white, in this case, agreed with Levon simply castling, opting not to capture. Uh, and now Hikaru plays the move queen to c8, perhaps uh, defending these light scores even more. And now, of course, the key difference in this game versus the last game is this bishop is still on the board. And with this bishop still on the board, this queen cannot come to the most natural square on c7. This is sort of the downside to leaving the bishop alive. So that's why we see the slightly more awkward queen c8 to b7 in this game. Uh, now, Levon does something uh, very, very interesting that we haven't seen yet from, uh, from the white side. And the reason for this is that, as I said, generally black is the one trying to decide the absolute best moment to open up files on the queen side. In this game, Levon tries to press that issue, daring black to open the files immediately, perhaps before black is, is really ready to do so. Uh, and so the move knight a4 came on the board by Levon, and I, I quite like this idea. To my knowledge, it is a, a novelty uh, that Levon has played here. So uh, I'd like to ask you guys at home, how would you respond to this with uh, the black pieces? Would you sort of cave and take on b4, maybe take on c5, or play b5? Or would you sort of stand true and uh, ignore this knight on a4? Play a move like queen b7, for example. How do you want to respond to this? Probably not the best title for the chess class given his opening play today. Well, Mark, we're looking at how uh, it kind of went wrong for Black in some cases. We're looking at some of his draws as well, if we find the time. I'm um, starting off with two losses for Ikaru, which is probably a bit unfair for him, as he does have quite a number of, of re really nice draws in this game as well. Uh, this is, in fact, live, Anil. Uh, Edward Lee says b5. Bishop takes d3 has been suggested. Bishop b5 is an interesting move. Didn't really consider that one. Exchange the bishop and b5. Then b5, b5 probably, a takes b. So if you do play the move b5, uh, of course, uh, some of you might have just not mentioned it, but you, you really can't play this move before trading off the bishops. So bishop takes, queen takes, and b5 is going to be a pretty interesting um, idea here for uh, black. The problem is, after knight c3, you really are committing to quite a lot here. Uh, with this pawn on b5, Black does have to be very, very, very cautious now. Uh, and the move he has to be cautious of, for example, if he passes, a rook lands on b1, he passes again, b takes a5, rook takes a5, and, and a4. This is now always going to be a threat in the position for white. And the threat of, is, of course, to remove the c6 pawn, giving white a passed pawn on c5. Now, immediately, that isn't a problem, because black doesn't have to make two nothing moves in a row. But it is sort of leaning towards playing the immediate a takes b4 and a takes b4. And this, I believe, is sort of what Levon Aronian wanted. He wanted uh, Hikaru to open up the position as quickly as possible before he was ready to really dominate the a file. 
And I think here, black is not really going to be totally comfortable. Uh, the reason for that being, he has no compensation for this c6 pawn. The c6 pawn is just going to be a stark weakness in this position. Now, is it enough for white to win? I'm not so sure, but isn't it, is it an advantage? I think definitely. And that's just because black does not have the dominance over the A file that he really looks to achieve before opening things up. So in the game, Hikaru actually chooses the move queen b7 instead. And that's not to say taking and playing b5 is wrong, uh, but Hikaru does choose to play queen b7 instead. And I do think this leaves black with a little bit more flexibility to play for um, uh, more of a direct equality than... Uh, having this contested A file with this weakness on C6 sort of persisting. Uh, now in the game, there is actually finally the really interesting idea of taking on B6 available to Levon. Uh, it was not played in the game, and I really am not such a huge fan of this move. You should really only be playing this move if you can really directly get an attack on the C6 pawn. Because once you take on b6, there's sort of no going back. This bishop is now active, this knight is going to be active, and all of black's pieces sort of spring to life the second this pawn disappears. But instead, simply queen c2, I think is the better move, is the more principled uh, approach. Uh, now, after the queen has uh, sort of committed to moving, black does capture on d3. We see queen takes d3. And now Hikaru goes for the move knight to e4. And I actually am not the hugest, the hugest, the biggest fan of this move in general by Hikaru. This is another advantage to not playing knight h5 and knight takes f4. Your knight does have access to this e4 square. But I think more relevant is actually sort of trying to bring more pieces over to, uh, to, to the queen side. I think this sort of been, should have been priority number one for Hikaru. For example, if you play a move like b5 in this case, knight c3. Now all of a sudden you do have time to play something like rook a6 and rook over to a8. And now this dominance on the a file can sort of be achieved by, uh, by black. Once again though, you do have to be slightly wary of these ideas with a4 to follow, but I don't think they're quite, ni quite working here just yet for uh, Levon with stuff like b4 being very, very reasonable. This is likely why Hikaru didn't choose to go for this though. Uh, just because Levon has been so cagey on this uh, queen side here, daring black sort of to, to play this b5 move. Uh, knight e4 though, and Levon responds very, very naturally with rook f to b1. Uh, just super preparing for the opening of these files. a takes b4 now was uh, Hikaru's choice. a takes b4, b5 does come on the board, and now knight c3 by Levon challenges this knight on e4. And so f5 by Hikaru was uh, his choice. And f5 is, is, is a little bit much, in my opinion. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's quite a lot to give away here. Uh, perhaps simpler for Hikaru would have been to keep things as level as possible, not committing to this f5 move and just taking on, on c3. Now, you know, we can sort of just pass the time play bishop d8 even if we're worried about our a5 square and uh, sort of uh, go for for this e5 counterplay after the move f5 i think the issue for Hikaru is levon simply avoids this trade and it's it's now sort of impossible to find counterplay with the black pieces uh, f5 removes any ideas of playing the move e5 in this position and because of that all that really remains is the A file, which still stands contested. And other than that, black has simply no active play. So with F5, uh, black truly uh, cements this knight on the E4 square, but gives up any chance of, of active play, which I think was Hikaru's mistake in this case. The move bishop F6 came on the board, but now Levon is happy to play his next move. Uh, hopefully you guys at home can see it. It's the same idea connected with knight E2. Uh, go ahead and take a guess for yourselves. I'm not going to wait though. The move, of course, is knight e5. Uh, this move by Levon aims to use the d4 square with this e2 knight once again. This is a really key move that white times uh, in order to make it good for him to recapture, sort of with the pawn, and play this move knight d4. Uh, 
uh, trying to just sort of overwhelm black immediately. In this case, black cannot actually capture this knight because knight d4 is just simply winning there. So knight g5 is played instead. Uh, now, Levon does actually capture on d7. We see queen takes d7. And I'd like you to try and find Levon's next maneuver here. Try and find Levon's maneuver. What do you think he played in this position in particular? King Lear is asking when I'm going to make an effort to try and get a FIDE title. Um, probably not until there are FIDE tournaments that I can play in again. Why would black play b5? I presume the white knight wants to reroute anyways. Uh, well, it's, it's all down to that pressure la that Levon was putting on the, uh, on the queen's side. Uh, perhaps if black didn't play b5, white really would start thinking about playing an active move like b5 himself uh, and, and other things of that, that nature. We can back up to that position, though, and sort of examine it. Uh, okay, knight c1 going for d5. I assume you mean e5, Manny. Yeah, he corrected himself, and that's actually totally correct here. Bishop d6. Bishop d6 is actually a, a really good move here for, uh, for white, but... It's, it's sort of just a, a single tempo. It, it, it doesn't help too much. But yeah, the move Levon went for is actually this move, knight c1, with the idea of knight d3 and knight e5 to follow. Um, believe it or not, though, Levon actually has much better in this position. Uh, Levon is actually, I, I believe, just, just winning in this position with a better move. And nobody so far has suggested the move that is quite good for Levant. Winning might be an exaggeration, but it is really, really good for, for white. So nobody sees the winning idea. Rook a5, g4. No, unfortunately, these are not the moves. Rook a5, black is quite happy to take this. And this a-pawn, I think, is going to prove to be more of a weakness than an asset here with the rook on a6 being a blockader that's almost impossible to get rid of. I mean, you can try and do something like this, but good luck playing all those moves without hanging that pawn. g4, I think, is just a little bit too much. This pawn hangs immediately, for example. Uh, but the move is, in fact, going to be bishop e5, which Great Wolf has now put into the chat room. Excellent job there. And the reason this is so good for white is once again it dares black into capturing when once again knight d4 is just going to be the most monstrous knight I've ever seen in my life and that's just going to be dominating the black position and if you don't capture play a move like queen f7 for example or even knight f7 let's say well then white is going to be happy to capture here and play a move like knight f4 and these are now all weaknesses that you have to contend with on the king side of the board and this is going to be uh, quite relevant in the game as well. This is just simply too many weaknesses here. So, of course, queen f7 is an attempt to not allow these things. And in response to this, bishop takes uh, f6 is perhaps playable. But even better is the move queen d1. With the point being, you can't both guard this bishop and guard the a file. Play might continue. Knight e4. Takes, takes. Rook a1 takes takes when all of a sudden these things are, are going to be pretty devastating here if you go back this way I might just capture play knight f4 and it's difficult to guard all of the squares available to this white uh, white queen and this is just sort of sort of monstrous so I think this would have actually been slightly better for Levon going for this nice move Bishop e5 in connection with saying there are too many threats for you to deal with in this position. Um, understandably, Levon did not go for this, though. Uh, it, it was a rapid game. Difficult to find these complex ideas. Instead, playing knight c1. Now we have knight f7. Queen over to c3 is guarding the a1 square, preparing to try and capture the a file. Rook fe8 was played in the game. And now, simply knight d3, uh, going for e5, as previously stated. And once again, this is the problem with playing f5. Hikaru is still trying to get e5 in, but he just never has enough without this pawn, sometimes able to step to, uh, to f6 if needed. And it is, in fact, going to be white, taking control of this square. 
uh, queen b7 was played. And now rook b3 is a nice idea by white, uh, pointing out that he is able to double. Rook a4 was played in the game, and this is really the turning point in the game. Rook a4 is sort of admitting that, okay, black has done wrong here, uh, because white was able to take control of the, the a file. Uh, honestly, though, it's a little bit too late for uh, Hikaru to, to do anything else. Uh, he sort of has to go for this. Uh, of course, the idea now for Levon is the instant the rook lands on this square, he simply captures it. Uh, B takes, now rook a3, black hitting the pawn, and it's the same reason why rook a5 was a bad move for white. Uh, this pawn is just more of a weakness than it is a, a, a boon. Queen b5 was played in the game, which is a pretty sensible move. Queen c2, just piling up on this pawn. Rook a8 now, and now uh, Levon plays a very, very nice idea which uh, I guess you guys at home might want a chance to find. Uh, I'm going to spoil it, though, for you, so if you want to try to find it, pause your video now. The move is bishop c7, and the idea is we just stick this guy on a5, and all of a sudden it's nearly impossible to, to defend this pawn. Uh, Karu tried bishop d8 to defend it, but bishop a5 anyways. If you take this guy, I take here, and you are uh, pinned along the a file. So bishop back to f6. And then Levon goes up this A pawn. And I don't want to spend too much more time in this game. This game went on for years and years and years. There was complex stuff on the king side that happens. And at the end of the day, they ended up in this end game, which should be uh, good for white. And then black sacrifices the bishop. And we get rook and bishop versus rook, which Levon somehow did manage to win in this game with this being the final position. Forgive me for not going through all 118 moves. But the character of the game was really decided by this play on the A file. And this is so often what happens in these games. Uh, now I wanted to take a look at one more game for the end of the show here that was once again played between Levon Aronian and Hikaru Nakamura. I believe this is the, the game I wanted to go over. Uh, it's not. This is the game I wanted to go over. So in this last game, we'll see what it looks like when uh, it actually goes well for, for black, when black does manage to take over this A file and uh, sort of succeeds in his opening ideas. So let's jump right into it. We have d4, and of course our starting tabia is achieved without too much delay. Knight bd7 here, and c5 once again. Uh, in this game, once again, Hikaru does not opt for the knight h5 line, choosing c6 instead. And then h3, b6, b4, a5, a3 is all standard stuff. And he chose to repeat this h6 move once again, trying to dare white uh, into playing bishop d3, uh, trying to sort of save a tempo over the main variation. And now Levon goes queen to c1, which is a pretty interesting move. Uh, and this is perhaps the reason this h6 move is not played quite so often for, uh, for black. The point of this move is that if you kind of backtrack and play bishop a6 now, well, I can actually take this rook a6, or rook, yeah, rook takes a6, and play this move b5. And after takes, c6. And now you are sort of in for a world of hurt. The, the move b4 has to be played, but this knight simply jumps to b5 now knight c5, but the problem is my queen is in a very good position to sort of support these things, and knight c5 is, is genuinely a, a peace sacrifice for black. So queen c1 is a very devious move actually making a threat, and that's why we see the move bishop b7 by Hikaru. Bishop e2 was played in the game, queen c8 now, castles, bishop a6, uh, but black has sort of given this tempo back by playing bishop b7, followed by bishop a6. Uh, and now, uh, Levon plays the move rook to e1. We see queen b7 by Hikaru. Rook over to b1 now is eyeing this uh, file. Uh, probably a threatening move like b takes a5 with threats here. And so that's why we see, now that this rook has stepped off of the a file, Hikaru is confident that he can make use of the a file himself so he plays the move a takes b4. Of course, a takes b4 is played in response. If rook takes b4 here, uh, be on the lookout actually for the simple captures. And queen to c8. 
The point being, if you capture here, uh, your rook is hanging. And if you don't capture here, b takes c5 is, is going to be quite good. Uh, so a takes instead. And now bishop takes e2 is very natural. Bishop takes e2. And now black to move here. Black to move. I think you guys should be able to find black's next move. It's not like a crazy move or anything, but it, it is the sensible uh, continuation uh, of this opening. What is this opening all about? It's about the A file. That move is rook a7, of course. You just double the rooks. It's that simple. Rook c2 now by white is perhaps, once again, hinting at some stuff like c takes b6 or b5 with support for the c pawn. So Hikaru then plays the move b5, not wanting to open up his queen to attack, of course. And now after knight d2, white is aiming for this square, but rook f to a8 comes on the board. Uh, g4 by white. And now bishop d8 by black is, is nice. Just stopping any knight a5 ideas before they get started. And now it's clear that black is the one firmly in command with this control over the a file. Uh, g4 is, you know, trying to pretend you can do something on the king's side. But if black does get control of the a file, as I've said before, it's more than enough counterplay on the queen's side to compensate for any king's side attack that white can generate. Uh, so let's quickly go through, see how the game went. Bishop g3, bishop c7, and now Levon goes for f4, and this was his big idea. Uh, this bishop d8 move, yes, controlling a5, also coming to c7 to support potential e5 pushes as, as well for black. Uh, rook a3 was now played, taking advantage of his a file, king up to g2. Now rook 8 to a7 prepares to treble on the a file, as Yasser says. I don't know why he says treble instead of triple, but I... I would repeat anything that man said. Knight b3, <laughs> uh, queen over to a8, trebling. Uh, knight a5 now was Levon's idea. The point being, this rook gets a little bit stranded, but Hikaru had seen this coming and was actually just planning an exchange sacrifice here, which is a perfectly playable, uh, playable move. Uh, in general, rook 3 to a6 would have been the safer option, not allowing this knight a5 business. Uh, and the game would have just continued here. This is also fine for black, but queen a8, knight a5, and we do see rook takes c3, takes on a5, and takes on a5. And so black sacrifices the exchange in exchange for control of the a file, still the only open file on the board, pointing out that the rooks aren't very useful if they can't get to the open file, and this passed b pawn, which is protected and, and quite nice. Uh, in the game, bishop e1 was played. Knight up to e4 is a really nice square for the knight as well. Another advantage to taking off this knight on c3, rook c to b3, rook a2 is check, this rook blocked, rook a1, rook b1, rook a2, rook b2, rook a1, rook b1, rook a2, and the game was agreed to uh, a draw. So this is really what black is striving for in this type of opening. Uh, you open up the a file when you want to, not when white wants you to open up the a file. And that's really the character of this opening. It's, it's this battle between the player with the white pieces and the player with the black pieces to get control of these open files uh, for, for themselves. So white tries to force black to open them advantageously for, for white, and black tries to open them uh, at, kind of at his leisure whenever he's ready to firmly take control of the files. For example, in this game, the key move that Akaru saw to open up the file was this move rook b1. When this rook vacates the file, Hikaru said, now's my chance. He gave up on the a file. I should take it while I can. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, ended up drawing this game quite comfortably. I think that is just about going to do it for this lecture. Hopefully, you guys have a more solid understanding of this uh, opening that Hikaru keeps uh, repeating. If you guys are following any of these awesome online tournaments live, hopefully you'll be able to understand a little bit more the next time this appears on the board, what exactly is going on here. Uh, this has been Chess Openings Explained. We are going to have a tactics class happening on Twitch directly after this. So if you're watching live, be sure to head over to the Twitch channel for that. Other than that, that does conclude the lecture. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.